Welcome to the start of another weekly vlog. Um, I didn't go for a run this morning because my legs, quite frankly, feel like concrete. I didn't cool down after yesterday's run properly and now I'm paying the price. So I decided to do an ab workout instead, which I did not enjoy. I think I might try go to the gym this week. I'm not sure. I need to scope it out and just see what the um, situation with is, it is with my the gym that I'm a member of. Um, so yeah, I, I might try and do that this week just so I can kind of enjoy my workouts a little bit more. Also, while I was doing that workout, I had a couple of deliveries, one of which is quite exciting that I will share with you. Now, for our camping, camper van trip to Scotland at the end of the month, I've been trying to think of ways in which I can reduce the amount of things I travel with. I'm, I'm quite a, a notorious overpacker and I can only travel with the essentials for this trip because our camper van's quite small, so there's no room for excessive overpacking basically it has to be the bare minimum and something that i really struggle with is the kind of the volume of liquids i tend to travel with and just like bulky beauty packaging even when i get like travel sizes of things i just find i still end up traveling with just loads of excessive like packaging and just bulky bottles of liquids and stuff so i had heard that lush do these shampoo and conditioning bars and I thought that would be a great way to reduce my liquids and I guess just travel in a much more compact way and also I guess with these shampoo and conditioning bars you kind of obviously depending on how long you're traveling for and how much you use them you don't necessarily travel back with them so you kind of reduce the amount that you're traveling back with um, weird logic I know so I've literally just opened the box and as with always, always with Lush, you can smell it immediately. So I ordered two shampoo bars and two conditioning bars um, just because I couldn't decide. So I thought I'd test out a few. So this piece of paper tells me what I've ordered. I've gone for the blue scenic shampoo bar. Oh, that smells lovely. Mmm. Yes, like that a lot. It doesn't actually say what their kind of like properties are. I remember online uh, picking them because they were for like either thick hair or fine hair, that kind of thing. Then I've got the soak and float shampoo bar. Ooh, that smells really nice. Cedarwood, absolutely. Oh, okay, I can smell the cedarwood. Oh, that's so nice. I really want to try that out now. Oh, maybe I have to give it a test run and then conditioning bars I got the American cream which is a shine enhancing strawberry conditioner can't say I can smell the strawberry <coughs> sniff that a bit too hard but this one had lots of good reviews like hundreds of good reviews and then I've got jungle a tropical treat for hair oh that smells really nice I'm excited to try these um, and hopefully this will be a good way to reduce the amount of things I pack with. Um, to be honest, like I, I, this is a camper van trip. I, I don't need lots of makeup and beauty bits anyway, but um, hair. Hair is like my number one thing that I just, I really get quite over concerned about and worry about how I'm going to wash it and things like that. So hopefully these bars will be a good solution right let's see if we can do this lash tint it looks fairly straightforward but i've tried to do a brow tint before many years ago and somehow managed to mess that up right okay i'm going to use um eight hour cream for this hopefully this will work because I don't have Vaseline. Okay, I think I put a bit too much on. <laughs> Gel is on the tray. Using the mascara wand, coat the brush thinly, apply to the lashes, coat them well, leave for a minimum of two minutes. You can leave longer for a more intense result, but no more than eight minutes. Right. I 
time to take this off, I think. Okay, it seems to have like semi-worked. I can't tell right now if I've fully got rid of all of the product. I guess I won't know until I like properly cleanse my lashes. I'm going to try and talk to you whilst I do my hair because I'm a bit pressed for time this morning so I'm going to try and do some multitasking. Um, I went for a run this morning and I managed to do seven kilometres. I fully intended to do 10k however I got caught short if you know what I mean and I didn't want to do a Paula Radcliffe so I had to stop and come home but I'm glad I managed to do seven kilometres. I'm now getting ready, well, she says, trying to get ready. I'm now getting ready to go into London. Now, I went into London yesterday for something very exciting and I'm going back in today for the same exciting thing. And that is tattoo removal. Now, yesterday I had to go in for a patch test, like a consultation and a patch test, basically. And today I'm going in for the full procedure. I don't talk about my tattoos very often because honestly, I don't like any of them really. And I'm quite embarrassed by them. They're all very old. I had most of them done when I was around sort of like 17, 18 because Dean basically had a friend who was training to be a tattooist and I was like, you can practice on me. So there are no, none of my tattoos have any kind of meaning or story behind them. They were all extremely, extremely spare of the moment. There's no thought behind any of them whatsoever. And for the most part, they are fine, but there's a few that I really was starting to regret. And there's also one that is, the quality of the tattoo is not great and it's kind of gone a bit blurry and yeah it's not good so I've actually already had one tattoo removed I was going through tattoo removal a few years ago no I stopped the tattoo removal last year I think it was and I was getting it done at a tattoo parlor local to me that also had tattoo removal facilities however I'm now going to go and get some tattoo removal at a different place a clinic in London now, why am I going all the way down to London to have tattoo removal, I hear you ask? Well, a friend basically recommended this clinic called Nama in London to me that has only just opened and they're using very new and advanced technology, which enables you to have tattoo removal a lot more regularly than the kind of the method of tattoo removal that we know at the moment like well when I was getting this tattoo removed I was having to wait six to eight weeks in between each session excuse me each session this clinic thanks to their technology you can have tattoo removal done once a week which is crazy to think that I was having to wait up to two months in between each session with the one on the back of my arm to think that I could go and have tattoo removal once a week blows my mind. The thought of being able to remove a tattoo within the space of a couple of months is just crazy. I can't believe it. They were telling me about it yesterday at the patch test and basically the laser that they have used or developed and they are using is a lot faster, which means it breaks down the uh, ink more but it's gentler so it means that your skin can withstand the laser more often at the moment um other technologies mean that your skin has to heal after the procedure and because of how harsh the laser is it takes a long time and there's lots of blistering there can be scarring there can be all sorts so when my friend told me about this i was just like uh yes i definitely definitely want to give this a try so I contacted the clinic and they very kindly offered to give me some complimentary sessions. So I'm going to try my best to document all of this as best as I can. I didn't vlog yesterday because it was the first day I was in London since 
I don't know when, Feb maybe. And there was a lot going on in my head in terms of like mask, sanitizer, just like taking in all of my surroundings and just getting used to being in that kind of big city environment. So yeah, I kind of forgot to vlog, but well, I tried to vlog a little bit, but I spent about 70% of my day wearing a mask and you can't really hear what I'm saying through a mask. Like I tried to vlog on the train and you can't really hear what I'm saying. And then I was sat in the tattoo uh, removal place with a mask on, I had gloves on, I had goggles on, I had shoe covers on. So it was difficult for me to <laughs> pick up the camera and film the process. So what I'll do today is I'll just set up the camera somewhere within the room and just film parts of the process um, so what you'll see after me talking now is just like my day in London and then when I come back I can talk to you more about the process. But yeah, I, um, I've i got a tattoo on my ankle that's just terrible. It's an anchor that says sister, but sister was spelt wrong, don't even ask. And then I had to have a bit of a botch job done on it so that it did spell sister. But yeah, it's just, it's bad. It is, it's, um, the one on the back of my arm was like my my most disliked and the one that I wanted to get rid of first and then the one on my ankle has also been um, like high priority but to get this removed was such a laborious process and like I've been so reluctant to start it again on my ankle so when I found out about this clinic I was just like absolutely I will 100% give this a go because if it means I can get something removed within the space of like a couple of months then I will be so over the moon but yeah that's what I'm doing today so um yeah fingers crossed it goes okay I mean the patch test went fine yesterday and the whole consultation they're very confident that they can remove it all um yeah I, I can't wait to get this all started and start seeing like quite quick progress with it all I'm just packing my bag um I've almost finished so nearly finished the Dutch house and I was hoping to finish it before I got on the train today but I don't think I've got time. So I'm going to take this and I'm actually going to pack a second book because I'm finding reading like train travel. Ugh, what am I trying to say here? I'm finding that the, the best time to read is when you're traveling. Um, yesterday I read so much on the train. Uh, so the second book that I will pack is The Salt Line. It's quite big. I was trying to look for a book that was like slim line, um, but it doesn't matter. I can fit it in my bag. Yeah, Salt Line by Holly Goddard Jones. Another one that was kind of like, if you liked Station Eleven, you might like this. So the blurb sounds interesting. There are some very, very mixed reviews on Goodreads, as is the way with every single book. Um, so yeah, they're the two books I'm going to pack. I think um, I should probably set off because... I do not want to miss my train. Hello, as you can tell by the lack of footage from yesterday, my vlogging efforts did not go to plan. And that wasn't through lack of trying, because I did try. That was because I wasn't allowed to, because apparently the laser that they use can potentially damage cameras. So I couldn't film anything at all. Just that small bit of footage with my foot with the ice pack on. Um, they have to ice it just because the obviously the laser, the sensation is quite hot. So they ice it to kind of numb it, I guess. Um, so yeah, I'm back home now. I'm so sorry. That was, I was like really, really pumped to like vlog it all and show you the whole process, but I couldn't. So what I can only do is kind of show you the kind of aftermath of it and show you the tattoo as it fades. I've currently got it, um, I'll bring you down here. Oh, I've currently got it wrapped in cling film. Um, and I'm about to pop out and actually go and buy some uh, Vaseline for it and to get some like large plaster pads because I can't deal with having it wrapped in cling film for the next week or so. Um, because I basically, I, I'm not allowed to get it wet for a few days and I have to keep it coated in uh, petroleum jelly for a few days as well while it heals. But this is the tattoo, some of you might have spotted this tattoo in previous vlogs. It's not one that I like to rave about. 
Um, to be honest, there's not much to show you at the moment. I'll, um, oh, I don't know if you're going to be able to see that very well. <laughs> okay. Uh, it looks quite faded on the camera. Sorry, I'm just going to bring the exposure down just a wee bit. Um, yeah, it looks quite faded on the camera, but it's not at all. Maybe it looks a bit better in the mirror. Um, so yeah, it's a bit red. It's a bit swollen, um, but there, yeah, there's not much to show you so far, but that is the tattoo and that banner there says sister, but it's so like, it's just so blurry and it, it didn't heal very well basically and a lot of the colour sort of like bled out and yeah, it just, all in all, not a good tattoo and I wanted to get rid of it. Um, so yeah, that's that's where I'm at. So I've got to keep this covered uh, for three to four days, basically until the um, the redness and the swelling goes down. It's very tender. I'm not going to touch it. And then after that, they've given me. Sorry, I'm just going to change the exposure on this again. After that, I've then got a cream that they gave me to put on it. And then I'm going back in two weeks' time. So. In two weeks we'll see how it's healed and then they will be able to tell me if I can up my sessions to weekly or whether we keep it to twice weekly. But to be honest, even if I kept it to twice weekly, I wouldn't mind because it's better than uh, the every eight weeks that you normally have to do. Uh, so like I said, I'm now about to head out and go and buy some Vaseline for it. I'm also going to buy some big like pads to put on it to protect it while it's in the shower and just protect it day to day. I've got some trousers on today just to kind of protect it from any sun exposure because that's the other thing. You can't really expose it to sun too much because obviously you've just had your skin lasered so it's very very delicate you kind of have to keep the area covered and clean as much as possible and then I'm also going to go and buy some books I think not because I've run out but I've just I haven't bought like a big chunk of books for a while and I like to buy books in like bulk I'll buy sort of like five in a go then I'll read that five and then buy another five because I get overwhelmed by like huge piles of books so I like to kind of keep my reading pile quite small. Um, I finished The Dutch House uh, like I predicted on the train. It was brilliant. I absolutely loved it. And a lot of people on Instagram, because I posted it on Instagram yesterday, also were like, yep, loved it. And said that Commonwealth uh, by the same author is also very good. So I'm, I might look for that today. And so I didn't, I didn't start The Salt Line, but I think I am going to still pick that as my next book. Uh, what else did I say I was going to get from town? I can't remember. I think just really boring things. I need to get like some pants, some underwear, just some really basic pants. Um, but yeah, that, that's me for today. I'll just quickly show you what I'm wearing. I'm wearing this grey t-shirt from Sunspell, which you have seen before. It's their boxy, I think it's called the boxy boy t-shirt and I've got it in a size extra small. And then I'm wearing these uh, navy ami trousers. Again, you will have seen these quite a lot. And then uh, the suede, the taupe suede Birkenstocks. Um, nothing too fancy today. The uh, weather is its like really weird. It's like really muggy outside. And I just can't be bothered to like, you know, wear a nice dress or anything. So I'm just wearing, keeping it simple. small win of the day I just went into my local wine shop to see what they had and lo and behold there was one bottle left just sat on the shelf on its own so I swiftly took it to the till and purchased very pleased about that because I cannot find this anywhere online at all anymore the length of a trip into the city is so dependent 
on how long my bladder can last at the moment because open toilets that you can actually use are so like far and few in between at the moment like it's really difficult to find a toilet that is open for you to use basically like that in itself is quite a task and would probably take a while um and i was in i was in the city and i was like oh i really want to take a, like a nice long walk home the scenic route basically and just thought do you know what i don't think my bladder can last i need to get home um so i'm now like speed walking home um <laughs> and also about a month ago I switched over to natural deodorant and I'm still not used to the feeling of being sweaty like beforehand I was just using some really strong deodorant from like Shure or Dove that did quite a um quite a good job of basically stopping any sweat and obviously natural deodorant isn't necessarily an antiperspirant so I yeah I'm, I'm sweaty basically that's the um the short of it I am sweaty it's very muggy today and I'm wearing a light grey t-shirt so I'm very self-conscious about sweat patches on the t-shirt and I've just had a look at my armpits I don't know if you can see that but yes we have some sweat patches so now I'm really conscious about my back I just cannot get on board with natural deodorant I know sweating is like a completely natural thing but it, it just feels gross it doesn't it, it's such an uncomfortable feeling um so yeah basically I shouldn't have worn a light colored top and I shouldn't have drank a pint of water before leaving the house um but all in all quite a good trip I've got four books and two bottles of wine got my vaseline and i've got some pads some sort of like uh kind of like wound dressing things to uh, put over the tattoo which will hopefully work hopefully they're big enough because it's quite a big area on my ankle Whew. right i'm back and i've got something to show you all something that i'm very excited about I feel like this vlog's going to be a lot of me just talking and showing you things, but there we are. Um, as we kind of get closer and closer to our Scotland trip, I've been buying a few things um, in preparation. And a few people have asked if I'm going to vlog the trip. Of course, absolutely, I will vlog the trip. But I have ordered myself something that... Um, well, I'll just show you. Why am, I, why am I trying to create suspense? I came in this rather lovely vintage camera bag. Um, and it is, oh my gosh, it is heavy. A Super 8 camera. Now, I have wanted to try filming on Super 8 for a while now and I intended to take a Super 8 camera with me to Australia but I just wasn't able to find the uh, model of camera that I wanted for the trip basically and actually in hindsight I'm quite glad I didn't because this thing is heavy and I would not have wanted to carry this around Australia with me but I have it now it is humongous and it's uh, like I said it's so heavy and it came in this really awesome camera bag which I'm so thankful for because I can just keep everything in this bag and um, not have to worry about like fitting it within another bag. Anyway I've also ordered the film that has that arrived yesterday it's ludicrously expensive I've ordered two rolls of film I might order a third I'm not sure at the moment. It's becoming quite an expensive habit already and I haven't even filmed anything yet. So yeah, I want to try and create some very short Super 8 films. I can't remember how much you get exactly on a roll of Super 8 film, but it's not long at all. I'm talking like minutes, just a matter of minutes. So I managed to get this on eBay for quite a good price actually. I think I bought it for 280. No one else bid on it whatsoever. It is the Canon. 10 14 xls so this is kind of like i think this was one of the last super 8 can cameras that canon made so it's kind of like the top spec super 8 camera 
that you can get pretty much. I know that Kodak, there's been some talks of Kodak like releasing a, a like a new Super 8 camera, but that I don't know what's going on with that. Anyway, I looked into it and the price of that is potentially going to be through the roof. Um, so yeah, I got this on eBay. Was very lucky, no one else was bidding on it, and um, yeah, I'm chuffed with it. It comes with a microphone, it also comes with like a wide angle lens, the, the original manual, everything. It's like, it's almost like this hasn't been touched, it's been preserved perfectly. So I need to have a little play around with it and just like figure out what everything is. And I don't think I will be doing like a test run because the film and the processing is so expensive, it's kind of like I don't have that luxury of being able to just like do a quick test I just have to kind of get to grips with everything and then just hope that what I film comes out okay which is why I'm kind of like should I get a third film will two be enough um but yeah so I'm going to vlog the trip and then I'm also going to try and make some short super 8 films fingers crossed they work Dean has also ordered himself a new film camera I don't know where it is it was around here somewhere because he um, really wants to take some film photos while we were there, so he's ordered himself a Canon AE-1, I think it was called. Oh no, I can't get this closed now. But yes, she is quite a beauty. Do you remember when I discovered the Killing Eve playlist on Spotify and became obsessed with it? Well, the same thing seems to have happened with the Dark playlist. I have just discovered two Dark playlists on Spotify and it is pretty much all I've been listening to for the past week. There, one playlist is slightly better than the other. I will turn the camera around. So we've got Dark 1, 2, 3 soundtrack, which has got 39 songs on. However, we also have Dark, a Netflix original soundtrack that has 135 songs on. That's nine hours worth of music. I mean, when am I ever going to get through all of this? I'm trying, trying my best, but I keep going back to the start and um, replaying the favourites that I've sort of discovered in the start. Whereas this is only 2 hours and 50 minutes long, but then it's not as thorough as this one. Um, yes, I'm just going to turn you back around again. Um, yeah, I'm absolutely hooked. We're both hooked on Dark at the moment. We have started season 3, we're on the second episode of season 3. <sighs> it's confusing. But I don't find that annoying. Like I don't, I'm not annoyed by how confusing it is because I know that it is going to all make sense eventually. And actually I've just started to just let that wash over me. I think in season two I was so like hell bent on like making sense of things and trying to like figure out things. And now I'm just like, Do you know what? I'm just gonna let things be what they're going to be. And then have just have faith that by the end of this I will get the answers um but it's just the the soundtrack's so good the actual like the the way it's shot and just where it's shot and just the the cinema the cinema photography sorry is just stunning like it's beautiful I think if if you have tried to watch it and you couldn't get on with it I hope at least you could appreciate the beauty of it because it is absolutely beautiful. Also just a tip for anyone who has struggled to watch it, so we watched season one uh, last summer I think it was and we watched it dubbed. I cannot recommend subtitles enough like it um, w watching it dubbed I found really distracting. I just kept looking at their mouths and it felt like it felt like I was watching something that was out of sync and I couldn't get past that and that really bugged me. But actually watching it subtitled is is way easier, it's so much more pleasant. It's nice to be able to hear the actual actors, like the characters' actual voices I think is much nicer. And also you can brush up on your German a little bit. It's just so, so good and I can't get enough of it and I'm quite sad that it's going to come to an end. But Equally, I know it can't go on and on forever, you know, we can't, we don't want another Lost where it just keeps going on and on for however many seasons that programme went on for. So anyone who wants to watch something new, I, I cannot recommend Dark enough, it is just 
brilliant and if you are following if you follow like my monthly playlist on spotify i think august's playlist is going to have a lot of agnes obel and a lot of um dreamy songs from dark for sure It's predicted to be the hottest day of the year so far today. I think London is supposed to get to um, something wild, like 36 degrees, which for us is exceptionally hot. And today I am heading down to Heathrow. My dad is driving us down to Heathrow to pick my sister up. She has flown back from Australia for a bit so this could be an interesting car journey it's going to be a hot one for sure um yeah that's what I'm going to be spending most of my day doing Dry going to Heathrow and then coming back hopefully we'll be back in good time it's now like 10 to 8 my sister lands at 12 or half 12 I think so hopefully we'll be back in good time and can sit in the garden this evening and enjoy the last of the sun um but I'm I'm looking forward to seeing her. I, to be honest, I saw her at the um, start of the year. I saw her in January when we were there. But my dad hasn't seen her for two and a half years, which I just is mad. Obviously, um, we FaceTime and that, but it, flying to Australia is a commitment. It's such a long way to go. I don't mind it. I'm quite used to that, the, the flight. I've done it so many times now. And I always think... Um, personally for me I think it's worth it what you get the other side but um yeah my dad hasn't braved that long haul flight yet especially because when you go there you have to really um you know you have to take quite a chunk of time off work and I just don't think my dad's been able to so I'm just looking for my concealer brush so yeah he hasn't seen her for two and a half years so I think he's really looking forward to this um, oh, by the way, the eyelash tint thing, semi-worked, half-worked, shall we say. Um, once I was finished, I noticed that I kind of missed quite a lot on the top side of my lashes. And also, I'm finding now that they are tinted or, or dyed, shall we say, that they don't curl as well. They don't hold their curl. And I don't know if that's to do with the dye. Because I guess, you know, like when you, it's the same as when you dye your hair, you're changing the texture of your hair so it tends to kind of hold a slightly different shape or doesn't hold a shape you know so I'm wondering if the same thing has kind of happened with my lashes or it could just be that my scar my mascara is running out and I need to top that up so yes that is um me for the day I'm not putting I'm not putting much makeup on there's not really any point I just imagine I'm gonna sweat this off Um, I'm absolutely flying through girls. I think I watched four episodes last night. They're, they're so short. They're like 20 to 25 minutes long. Um, which I quite like about US programmes. Because obviously they have so many adverts. Programmes tend to be quite short. So it feels like it's it's easy to digest. I have to say I'm really enjoying Adam Driver's character. Um, I know he's a bit divisive and a lot of people didn't warm to him but I've read that there's some really good character development with him and he kind of grows a lot. I know I haven't read too much about the series but I'm, I'm aware that he is in the series. Um, I don't know if he's in for the whole thing but I know there's a lot of development with him which I'm quite looking forward to seeing. Because even as he is now, I quite, I, I like him, but I like Adam Driver, so, so I'm a bit biased. But um, yeah, really enjoying it. A few people were like, oh, it takes a while to get used to, but 
I think I knew within like the first couple of episodes that this was my kind of program that I mean that could change in the next few seasons but at the moment like it's really um it really is my kind of show I look like a bit like a clown in the viewfinder but it's not that pink in real life right I better go because I think my dad is going to be here in the next 10 minutes or so and I need to quickly eat something and pack a pack a bag of snacks and other things because I think this could be a a good like three hour drive to get to Heathrow. I'm just wearing this cos jumpsuit that you will have all seen before. It's pretty much my go-to as soon as the weather gets like this because it's so big and light and airy. Just trying to figure out which shoe to wear. I mean, does it really matter? I'm going to be sat in a car and then I'm going to be stood at the arrivals bit in Heathrow. <laughs> um, white or black? Do you know what? I think I'm going to go black. I know that's very boring and predictable, but I think just in the, ca the case of the colour of this jumpsuit, let's go with black. And then I'm just wearing the Majuri chain and the Majuri small hoops and the signet ring. And then I'm just going to put on a bracelet as well. Truly a perfect reflection of how hot it's been. These are the citronella candles that we normally burn when we're out here eating dinner. Just got back from Heathrow to find them completely collapsed in on themselves. Oh dear. I think, I reckon I can still get this one to maybe stand up. But poor things. We're about to head out to a birthday barbecue so I just went to the plant shop that's quite close to our house and picked up a plant for the birthday girl. I'm quite jealous of this plant, I feel like I might have to get myself one. I really like the sort of, almost looks like leopard print uh, stalks. And then along with the plant I picked up a bottle of wine that I know that she loves so that'll be a nice treat for her. So yeah, I thought that was a nice little gift, a plant and a bottle of very nice wine.